Hello and welcome to the FCICA webinar series. Thank you for joining us. We apologize for those technical issues, but we are on. This webinar will be recorded. The recorded session will be housed on the FCICA Member Center and this educational portal. Mark your calendars for these upcoming webinars. January 27, Educa an education webinar, Understanding Common Rigid Core Flooring Issues, presented by Graham Copa Bianco with Novalis Innovative Flooring. On Thursday, February 10, Adhesive Selection and Installation for LVT, presented by Jeffrey Johnson, Mapei Corporation. And Monday through Wednesday, March 21st through the 23rd, the annual convention and commercial, floor trading commercial flooring trading show in Biloxi, Mississippi. Visit fcica.com to view and register for these events. For today's webinar, please note for the Q&A, you can enter your questions in during the program in the Q&A box to the, on the left hand of your screen. Your questions will be answered at the end of the program. Thank you again for joining us for You Only Get One Back, so treat it well. We are pleased to introduce our presenter, Tony Consultant with Federated Insurance. As a risk consultant, Tony equips business owners and, associate, and association members across the nation with information and resources aimed at helping to keep their employees safe on the job. He meets with clients to help them recognize and mitigate their risks while helping them build and strengthen their management, their safety management culture. Welcome, Tony. We're excited to have you. I'm going to turn the controls over to you. Thank you so much, Christine. Appreciate your time and thank you for having me on. Um, going to talk a little bit about uh, some uh, back safety issues, making sure that your uh, workers are working uh, as smart as they can while getting their job done and uh, preserving their back so they can have a long and uh, healthy career. Uh, so let's just get right into it. What do you think about uh, when you hear the phrase workplace injury? You think about a driver in a crash or maybe a worker falling from a ladder, possibly a laborer struck by a falling object. Uh, all those will occur on a job site, but they don't reflect the reality of all workplace injuries. Some injuries take longer to develop and sneaking up on workers and causing severe and sometimes lifelong pain. Those are the injuries that we want to talk about today. Back injuries are the single most common injury on a work site accounting for an estimated one in five injuries on the job. By itself, that rate sounds high, but the true number, nearly one million back injuries per year on work sites is truly alarming. So how do we account for that high number? Are the injuries intentional? I don't think so. I'd like to think not. Uh, is it recklessness? A little bit. Um, you've got young workers or workers who've been doing the same thing the same way for so long, they tend to think that they're invincible. Uh, another part of it is a little bit of it is uh, ignorance. Uh, most of us just don't think about the cumulative effects of overexertion and improper technique. Uh, it starts when a worker's young in their prime. They can handle lifting loads with their backs and placing them above their heads. They can tolerate some slight discomfort after a day of laying and stretching carpet or fitting together some wood floor and plank. Then the little bits of trauma build and collect after years and years until one day the pain is just too much. Take a look at the risk factors up on the screen right now. Awkward postures, repetition, twisting torso, static postures, poor lifting technique, quick movements. Uh, do any of them look familiar? They all should. The actions are part of the everyday lives of your employees. They're constantly moving products from one place to another, sometimes in a hurry to help meet a deadline. They're often kneeling on the floor to place and adjust flooring materials, and they're doing this over and over all day, sometimes five days a week or more. And after a while, it all adds up. So this is a, a true claim example from the Federated Record. An employee was on a job site lifting a stack of tiles and he tweaked his back. He visited a physician, got an MRI, and that MRI confirmed that the injury was a herniated disc that required surgery and physical therapy before attempting to get back on the job site. 
the total cost of that uh, injury was $60,000. This next one here is in the quick movement file. While moving flooring tools, a seasoned flooring contractor tripped, suffered a lower back injury, and as a result, had to have multiple surgeries, including lumbar surgery, but he never fully recovered. And because of the permanent work, ex uh, excuse me, permanent work restrictions, the employee was unable to return to work in the flooring industry and is now training for a new profession that's easier on his back. The total cost of that loss, $300,000. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why is someone from an insurance company talking about the cost of, uh, of an injury? Isn't that what they're there for? Uh, that's true. Um, where insurance companies are obligated to fulfill their promise to pay for covered loss, which in this case is $300,000. But that's not the whole story. There are hidden costs involved in every loss. There are unseen costs that insurance will not or cannot cover. Some estimates say that hidden costs for an injury range from two to six dollars for every dollar in direct uh, direct claims costs. Uh, some of those indirect costs include uh, lower morale among your workforce. If your workers see one of their own suffer a painful injury on the job, it's going to affect their work at least for the day and probably longer. You're going to lose productivity in quite a few ways. Your crew is shrunk, and your deadline is now in jeopardy. If the injured worker was the only one on the site, progress on that job has completely, uh, completely stalled. And what if the injured worker was a seasoned vet? Now you've just lost one of your workers, one of your best workers even. A supervisor's time is also affected. Tending to an injured employee takes your worksite leadership away from the task of keeping the job running smoothly, leaving the crew directionless at a time of high stress. Uh, replacing and training a new employee. Uh, if you can even replace the uh, injured employee, you will spend time and money onboarding and training that employee. And let's not forget the effect an injury will have on your workers' compensation mod number. The workers' compensation mod, also known as the experience modification rate or EMR, is the number that insurers use to help determine a worker's compensation premium. The number reflects how a business's worker's compensation losses compared to other businesses of a similar size in the industry. A uh, 1.0, like company A, is about average. Anything below, like on company B, reflects a better than average uh, reported safety record. Anything above a 1.0, like on company C, indicates a worse than average reported safety record. Frequency of workplace injuries has a greater effect on the mod, but the severity of losses can still have a profound effect. <clears throat> uh, back injuries tend to be severe, severe excuse me, and they sometimes require multiple surgeries and can keep people out of work for significant periods of time, driving up the cost of wage replacement and the mod as a result. Uh, we've even seen high workers' compensation mods uh, be the culprit in uh, lost contracts. If a contractor's mod is too high, a general contractor could read that as an indicator of an unnecessary risk. Even one claim, if it has a big enough impact on your mod, could decide whether or not you are granted a job. Your number one tool in uh, helping protect your business and your employees is your leadership. Your employees look to you for guidance and direction. Use your influence to positively affect the safety and well-being of your employees. Show them that you care. And most importantly, model the behavior that you want to see from them. It's not a stretch to guess that you've seen some of the risky behaviors that I talked about at the top of the presentation here. Uh, it's probably also not a stretch to guess that your workers have been doing those things that way for years, possibly even decades. It's not that your employees are practicing harmful habits on purpose. They just want to get the job done. Uh, maybe the habits just haven't caught up with them yet, but the chances are good that they will. They will catch up with them if they continue. But they'll only change, your workers, excuse me, will only change if they understand the dangers. So make it a priority to show your employees the risks that they face. Start by holding a safety meeting. 
It doesn't have to be long. 10 or 15 minutes can do a lot of good. There are lots of ways to drive your point home. Tap into professional resources by showing a video, giving a pre-written presentation. Even better, tell a personal story, something that's happened to you or something that you've seen on the job site. Your own personal experiences can be very powerful. So uh, what do you talk about in that safety meeting? Start with the basics. Remind your workers of the potential hazards that they're exposed to, like maintaining static positions, bending for long periods, and unsafe lifting. Most importantly, make sure you practice what you preach. If you're working with your team, apply the lessons to teach, uh, uh, excuse me, apply the lessons you teach to your own work. Supply your employees with the tools they need to help save their backs, including lifting aids and carts. When you follow through, it shows your crews that you're serious about their safety and it could potentially save you money. Once your employees know how serious you are about helping them protect their backs, follow through by encouraging teamwork and team lifts and distributing physically demanding tasks equally to share the load. And if they come to you with a complaint about back pain, listen and provide some relief by rotating responsibilities to add some variety to the work and equipping them with what they need to save their backs. If they come to you with, uh, with a complaint that they don't see any action on, they're not going to not gonna trust management to look out for their best interests. So uh, if someone ever comes to you with a problem, make sure that you follow through with what you tell them you're going to do. So lifting is not the only source of back injury, but it is one of the major ones and one of the easiest to avoid. Uh, you can do that by stressing smart work to your employees instead of hard work. It's possible to complete a job efficiently without sacrificing the body. The following steps can help reduce the cumulative harm from unsafe lifting on a worker's back. The first step, assess the load. Can the load be gripped easily by one person? Uh, can it be lifted with little effort? And is the weight concentrated in a small area or is it distributed over a large area, like on a carpet roll? If an object is heavy, more than about 40 to 50 pounds or awkward, give your employees a cart or encourage them to find someone to help them lift it. Step two, position for success. If the load can be lifted by one person, the lifter should plant their feet as closely as possible, bend the knees, keeping the back as straight as possible. Step three, get a grip. Place the hands in a way that will promote balance. Grip the load firmly using as much of the hands as possible, supporting it from underneath, if at all possible. Step four, straighten the legs. You've all heard it. Don't lift with your back, lift with your legs. Uh, after getting a good grip, straighten the legs, still keeping the back straight. Feet should be flat in the same position they were when, when they were planted. The lifter shouldn't be leaning in any direction. If they're leaning forward or backward, the load is too heavy and needs to be reassessed. Step five, position the load and carry it safely. Keep the load positioned close to the body using the friction of the chest and the abdomen to relieve pressure on the arm. An important thing to remember here is to ensure that the load doesn't block the sight line. The lifter should take small steps on a clear path to the destination. If they feel out of control at any time, they need to set the load down as soon as possible and as safely as possible and reassess the best way to move it. Step six, place the load. Put the load down while maintaining good posture and technique as soon as possible to avoid unnecessary effort and strain. Uh, keep the load in a comfortable position as long as possible. And if the unloading surface is above the shoulders, use a step ladder or other elevating device. Those are the six steps for uh, an effective and safe lift. As important as it is to lift safely, it's also important to actively um, avoid uh, improper lifting techniques. So as convenient as some of the, uh, um, the behaviors here are, it, they can really take a toll on the back and the joints. Uh, twisting or bending brings the spine out of proper alignment, putting more strain on the muscles and the soft tissues and uh, increasing the cumulative effects of that improper lift. 
Uh, lifting in an awkward position, same story. If a lifter is bent over or hunched, it means that they're doing something wrong and putting extra strain on their backs. Uh, trying to lift heavy jobs alone, or sorry, heavy objects alone, um, has no good reason. The lifter should find someone or something to help. And if they're alone on the job site, they need to ensure that they have the equipment that they need to lift and move everything safely. Extending the arms while carrying the load uh, kind of in increases the strain on the back because the farther an object away is, the heavier it's going to seem and the longer, um, the, the harder the back is going to have to work to, to stay upright. And raising uh, the load above the torso kind of breaks that rule of keeping everything close to the chest and manageable. It can be really difficult in the, the flooring industry to completely avoid the hazards that cause back injuries, but it's important to try to, to do as many things as possible to reduce the amount of cumulative trauma that your workers are experiencing. Uh, encourage your employees to maintain their fitness for the job, stretch start, uh, before starting their day and throughout the day, probably at lunch when the, after the muscles have uh, cooled down a little bit to get them back into shape. Um, if you have enough people on your crew, it's important to rotate responsibilities to avoid too much repetition and to give people relief from the, the activities that cause cumulative trauma. Um, equip them for success, like I've said, with lifting aids and carts. Uh, if you have uh, power trucks or jacks in a warehouse situation, uh, use those whenever you possibly can. Uh, encourage team lifts on awkward objects or objects that are more than 40 to 50 pounds. Uh, this sounds a little funny, but uh, try to do a quick team stretch before starting the day and after lunch. Um, it, it might seem a little silly at first, but it's really going to save a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, trouble down the road. And if you ever see somebody engaging in a harmful practice, make sure you speak up. Let them know that they, they need to alter their, their form to, uh, to help preserve their back a little bit. And I would uh, also encourage you to have your other employees speak up if they see an unsafe practice as well. So being in the safety industry, we know how hard it can be to properly communicate safety messages to your employees. And it's also even harder to, to make sure that they're receiving it and, and uh, um, taking it to heart and, and using the advice. So you might get a little resistance if you, if you push back injury prevention techniques. Uh, so what do you tell someone who refuses to do some simple things to save their back? Here's some common reasons and responses. The most common that we hear is that it's my back. That's, that's true. It is their back, but it is your job site. Uh, this is not a power grab. It's meant to communicate that you as a manager or supervisor are responsible for what happens on the job site, good or bad. And part of that responsibility is looking out for the safety of the crew. Um, and workers might say, it hasn't hurt me yet. That might be true, but just because it has not uh, happened yet doesn't mean that it won't. We hear this argument a lot as well. History is an okay indicator of what might happen in the future, but it's not perfect especially with back injuries, which tend to build over time. So it, encourage your workers to, um, to start practicing good, uh, good practices as soon as possible. Uh, another argument, it's quicker my way. Uh, that is a, a really simple one to, to just get rid of. Uh, management worries about the deadline. You've got to respect someone who wants to be efficient, though. Uh, it means that they're looking out for the best interests of the company, but managing a project is not their responsibility. It, that belongs to someone else. So encourage them to focus on doing the job well as quickly as they can while remaining safe. And just because they can carry something heavy like a carpet roll or a batch of tiles uh, by themselves doesn't mean that they should. Uh, don't let any of these conversations turn into arguments, though. Uh, make sure that your employees uh, know you're looking out for their safety, not micromanaging their behavior. Drive your point home by encouraging them to report job site hazards, including those that could cause a back injury. Uh, fitness for duty is not something that happens uh, only in working hours. It's an extension of an employee's general fitness. That means that their off-the-clock behavior is an important component of staying fit for the job. Uh, you can't dictate what the, your employees do off the clock, and, and we would never suggest that you try but you can stress the importance of being fit for the job they're doing. 
here's some tips to tell your employees uh, to promote fitness for duty. Remember Newton's first law of motion, little nerdy, but follow me here. Um, objects in motion tend to stay in motion and objects at rest tend to stay at rest. Developing, developing and practicing good habits in general will carry over into the job site. Um, encourage people to stay active outside of work. Uh, exercise regularly. Uh, it doesn't have to be constant or rigorous. It doesn't have to be structured. But participating in activities that work the body is really important for overall health. And most importantly, maintain good posture outdoor work because that is also going to uh, follow them uh, in, onto the job site. Um, encourage your workers to listen to their body. If they feel tension or pain in their back, have them take it easy. Have them tell a supervisor, manager, and, and consult a doctor. Um, these, these things often come with, with telltale, or injuries, excuse me, come with telltale signs uh, that people need to, to learn not to ignore. Otherwise, they're going to have a, a major problem in the future. Um, on, the, on the site, look for ways to reduce excessive back and other muscle strain, like practicing stay, safe lifting techniques. Um, even off the job site and adjusting other activities. So uh, Federated Insurance, like I mentioned before, is a risk management company first and foremost. Um, so how can we help? Um, our focus is on the success of our clients. It's right there in our mission statement. Uh, we do that by uh, obviously by paying claims, but also by providing risk management services aimed at preventing property damage, deaths, injuries, um, and helping businesses, business owners and their employees make it home safely at night. Um, our client portal, MyShield, is the hub for all the services that we offer. It's a, a, a digital solution that uh, offers uh, the access to our um, materials that have been developed by our own risk management professionals and uh, third-party uh, training platforms that have come to us through industry-respected third-party partners. Uh, these platforms will address broad topics like back injury prevention, like we're talking about today, safe ladder use, first aid, uh, other worksite hazards. And then they also dig deeper into topics like uh, working in confined spaces, fall protection, and more. So um, if you have a uh, concern uh, safety-wise on a job site, chances are Federated has something that can help you mitigate that risk. Uh, as part of our membership with the FCICA, uh, members, even those who are not federated policyholders, have access to some of our most valuable risk management resources, such as a guide to creating a motor vehicle records program, uh, return to work and modified duty resources, which can be uh, invaluable if you're, you have somebody who experienced a back injury on the site. Um, you want to get them back to work as soon as possible to kind of keep those um, wage replacement dollars down. Uh, we also have things like um, ma uh, information on managing the risks of working with subcontractors, uh, HR, um, forms and policies. So you have access to everything on the screen here just for being a member of the FCICA. The most valuable thing that we provide to our clients is us. Uh, live risk management professionals. In a world where everything is turning digital and you're more likely to talk to a computer when you call a company, uh, you will speak to a person, a dedicated safety professional every time you call them. We have an army of highly trained marketing representatives that forge lasting relationships with clients, business owners, uh, other risk management professionals within organizations. We have a uh, field risk consultants that give the personal touch and visit businesses to offer life safety meetings, walkthroughs, and uh, other personalized risk management services. And the risk consultants here in our home office, like me, uh, can guide you through our vast collection of risk management materials and resources. So it's not too late to practice uh, good back uh, injury prevention. The crews that you run are likely from all different phases of their careers. You've got some who are rookies, some who are more experienced workers, and some who are looking to close out their careers soon. Uh, it's important for all of them to know that it is never too late to practice back injury prevention. Just because someone doesn't have uh, back pain right now doesn't mean that they won't tomorrow. 
I'd like to thank you so much for your time and uh, invite any questions that people have. Thank you so much, Tony. Um, if the audience has any questions or comments, please submit them in the question box to the left of your screen. Um, we do have a couple questions, uh, Tony. The first question is, do you have any PPE recommendations for preventing injury? Uh, back prevention injury specifically, we, we recommend using uh, lifting aids and smart lifting techniques. Um, back belts can be used. Um, we know that there are some situations where they are uh, not as effective or might actually cause more injury than they would prevent. So we, we suggest um, speaking to physicians and um, looking at manufacturer recommendations before making any purchases or, or um, giving any of that kind of equipment to your employees. Okay. Uh, next question is, who do you see suffering from back injuries most often? Uh, unfortunately, we see a lot of uh, more experienced workers suffering from back injuries. They, they tend to be the ones who have been kind of repeating the, uh, um, the more harmful techniques for longer. So their cumulative trauma has built up their, their bones and tissues and muscles have kind of degraded to the point where they're more susceptible to, to those injuries. So we, we see a lot of the, the really kind of the most experienced workers um, suffering those injuries most often. Okay, thank you. Um, reviewing the questions. Um, do, the next question is, do workers often come back from back injuries? Yeah, some of them do. Um, some of them make full recoveries. Some of them make partial recoveries where they can uh, do some things that they used to do, but not all of them. Um, unfortunately, in in the flooring contractors industry, um, you're you're you know you're kneeling and bent over on the floor a lot, applying adhesives or or stretching carpet. Um, so the the uh, chance that a, a worker is going to come back at full strength is you know it, it lowers as as they're they get a little older. Um, and some of them we don't even see come back at all. Like that, that real claim example I talked about earlier, um, they just have to do something else, which is a huge shame for them because they spent their, you know, their entire career developing the skills and the passion for the industry. And they all of a sudden have to do something else. And it's also a, uh, a real shame for the industry because we know how difficult it can be to find qualified people right now. So it, it's really a good idea to make sure that your employees are practicing back safety for, um, you know, for their sake and for yours. Great. Thank you, Tony. Um, there doesn't appear to be any additional questions. Um, so uh, thank you on behalf of FCICA for attending today's webinar. And thank you, Tony, for presenting today's webinar. We apologize once again for the technical difficulty at the beginning. Um, Tony, if you wanted to share any final uh, comments before we close. Uh, no, thank you. I'm all done. I appreciate it. Okay, great. Thank you, everybody, for again, for um, attending today's webinar. And um, one final announcement. SIMS, you may now navigate to the Submit Credit tab to receive credit. Please note that you must be signed into the educational platform for this feature to work. If you have any issues, please let us know. This is the conclusion of the webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.